Hey there, so today I wanted to take a look at PCBSD um, 10. Um, so I've been using Linux since, um, well, uh, 2003, so over a decade now. And um, PCBSD has always been this kind of fascinating little thing on the side. Um, back when I was doing a lot of animation with Blender, I had um, put BSD on a whole bunch of... Um, computers to be a render farm for me because BSD had very very low overhead and I could send the frames to be um, rendered over there and I'd wanted to take a look at um, at uh, PCBSD um, but the last time I did was 2008 and uh, at the time I was doing using VirtualBox and um, you know, I was very happy. I was talking about it. I was doing a lot of stuff, and the installer was kind of great. And then it didn't load. So I'm hoping for a better result this time. I got a uh, quite a few uh, angry uh, comments about that. Now, um, back then they used to use um, KDE, which I thought was kind of cool because you kind of can go from Linux to BSD, and it's still KDE, and everything is good. Now, when I go over here to their uh, website, it looks like they're now using this thing called Lumina. I'm not sure what Lumina is, but we'll take a look. Um, off the top of my head, it kind of looks maybe based off of Qt, if not maybe uh, some kind of fork off of uh, KDE. We'll see once once we get it loaded up. Interesting, it says tracking free guaranteed. Um, which is not something I've seen on any of the Linux distros, although I'm not sure exactly what would be s special about it other than here they mention their Persona Crypt, Stealth Sessions, and Tor Mode. Um, so um, definitely taking the um, stability of FreeBSD and then um, tacking on this um, security stuff that people have been uh, very, very interested in ever since the um, Stone and Revelations of 2013. And um, and this part will also be interesting uh, in terms of seeing their package management. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at their install. So we'll do a graphical install. And um, as you can see, I'm running this in, um, in KVM uh, with Camu. And uh, it works pretty well for all my Linux distros and tends to run at more or less near native speed. So we'll see what happens here. <coughs> and it's still going. <laughs> Uh, when it comes to the time for the actual install, I'll um, pause the video. I'm not going to make you sit through the entire install. Um, but for this part, I just kind of wanted to let it uh, let it go uh, in real time. Or, you know, maybe I'll do some cuts in post. We'll see. There we go. Just when I was about to uh, stop. Huh. Video card is red hat. Interesting. Doopy doopy doo. It's entirely possible that this may not be doable. We'll see. Oh, and maybe. Oh, there we go. Ooh, nice. So this is the first um, thing I've looked at, including all the Linux distros, that actually uh, starts off in widescreen. All right. So let's say English. Yes. Next. Huh. Interesting issue. All right, it's going to be a um, desktop server. Oh, so it does do um, KDE. So maybe Lumia is just some kind of spin-off of KDE. Uh, Firefox, okay. Uh, I'll take a look at customize quickly. So there's emulators, there's drivers, uh, IRC, Java, virtualization. <laughs> 
That's cool. I'll just uh, leave it with the defaults. I'll go next. So I could customize the disk, but I'll just leave it here. So they're going to do a ZFS partition. ZFS is pretty cool stuff. Um, and they're going to have a slash, a slash temp, a slash user, slash user home, slash user jail. Actually, that's not, you know, we always say user, but it's not actually user. It's like universal something resource or something like that. Okay, so... Um, this is one of the things that's slightly different than Linux. The slash user, instead of just home being right there on um, uh, on the main partition, you can save it to USB, which is nice in case you're going to do this over and over and over again. And there's going to be a swap of 512 meg. Okay. Yep. All right. So, um, so it looks like these are some other things I could do. Um, so it's, it tells you here what it's running, which is pretty cool. Um, <coughs> not so many Linux distros do that nowadays. Um, most of them just kind of have a percent meter and they might show you what, um, s what packages they're installing, but this is actually showing you exactly what it's doing, uh, as if you were doing this at the command line. Now, um, this is a pretty interesting, uh, change. So I'm going to release my mouse here. And when back when I looked at it in 2008, this is what the install looked like. Um, so strangely, slightly more, I would say, antiseptic now, whereas before it looked kind of more, I want to say professional, but that's that would make it seem as if I don't believe... This is professional, and I don't think there's anything unprofessional about it, but it's just a very different focus, apparently. So, uh, if you look here by comparison, uh, I don't know. It's just this. This seems very different from this. This seems more. I don't know. Sparse, bare bones. Um, another example. If we go back here, there are also some different. Uh, some information here uh, which doesn't appear to be here and there's nothing wrong with that at all it's just interesting to see how it's changed because I'm pretty sure let me go back to their main website that that they are still um, well you know perhaps it's Perhaps, um, nope, there's still um, X systems, which are the people who do um, free NAS. They're still involved. But, you know, it's been a long time since I was involved in the um, BSD uh, world being more of a Linux person. So maybe maybe something happened in where it's less, um, where it's less uh, business oriented. If I go to X systems, they've got true NAS. They've got to pick a server. Maybe maybe they just aren't supporting uh, uh, PC BSD in the the way that they used to, um, which makes it less of a commercial thing. So it's that's why they have it this way. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. It's very fascinating to see how things have changed in the eight years since I last uh, took a look at this. So we're only at twelve percent. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna stop the video. And um, I'll I'll start back up uh, once the installation is complete.
So I don't know if you had keen eyes during the um, the boot up uh, after I had finished my install, but um, the VM stole my uh, Blue Yeti, so I uh, didn't have a chance to narrate the part where I was filling out my username and so on and so forth, but it's pretty self-explanatory. So I'm just waiting for it to boot right back up, just to do my initial look at a PCBSD. So I wonder, do they always have a more uh, textual um, login as Linux used to, or is that not graphical just because I happen to be um, in a VM? It doesn't really matter, I'm just curious. So what's interesting is that they refer to Lumia on their website. If you look here, it says Lumia, Lumina Desktop. Don't know what the F that is. Um, I just clicked here and include your choice of desktop. So I guess you had to pick Lumia, I'm not sure, but it actually defaulted to KDE. All right, so here we go. So I, I'm always a big fan of welcome pages, especially if this is a distro or in this case, an operating system most people aren't used to. So it'll be connected, it says. Let's see, no batteries, clipboard. Where are we? Okay, next. Install apps in the app cafe. Configure system with a control panel. Preserve files with life preserver. That's cool, and it automatically goes to free NAS, which again, IX systems are, I guess, at least partially involved with PCBSD. Stay up to date. Okay, get involved. All right, and so we're done with that. So this looks like there are updates available. Um, Nepomuk is, okay. So clearly looking at this here, they're using KDE 4, not 5. Um, Linux is now on 5.6, 5.6 is about to come out. Um, so it's a little bit behind in terms of KDE. But if you consider that for some people, KDE 5 is just being considered stable, it might not be so bad that they're on KDE 4. So <coughs> here we go. Here's some pretty sane favorites under applications, the usual. So it does come with VLC. That's pretty cool. Uh, sometimes, you know, the Linux distros don't do that. Uh, but this is BSD we're talking about, so there are going to be some differences. Office. Hmm. No. Well, you know what? I didn't pick any of those things during my install, so um, bully for them for having a minimal install that doesn't take up a lot of space on your hard drive. It gives you the choice to do that. I do like the choice of a life preserver icon here. All uh, right. What was this one here? This one was network shares. Okay. All right, and I don't need the battery. Let's unlock widgets. And it's been a little bit since I since I had KDE four. I've been on KDE five for a bit. Uh, add widgets removed. No, no, want to remove the panel. You know what? I don't really care about that at this moment. I'll just relock the widgets. All right. So let's see what's up with the updates. All right. Doesn't seem like anything's happening. Here we go. Start the update manager. All right. So this is user password does that work okay so update 
package ng, whatever. Uh, all right, so let's do this first. The PCPS, PCPSD's patch. This is a little slightly different system that I'm used to with Linux. Oh, this is cool. Automatically update security and packages. Okay. Everything only security, only packages or nothing. That's pretty cool. 20 minutes after system boot. That's actually pretty neat. Um, I don't know if this did anything. Did it? I'm not getting any feedback. Do it through Tor. That's kind of interesting. Okay. Hmm. Let's see here. View vulnerabilities. Huh. That's really cool. I like that. So it tells you the CV. If you're not in the security world, the CV kind of lets you know the explanation of of what's up and what's not working. Alright, so apparently the patch didn't want to work, but the update might work. Let's see what's going on with that. So it says starting update procedures. Here's a log. Let that do its thing. While that does its thing, it's, oh, currently performing background updates. Alright. Um, see the control panel. So we've got the easy PBI. So if I remember correctly, FreeBSD has some pre-compiled binaries. That's what pre-compiled binary. And then um, it all you can also always um, compile stuff um, if you want to have more fine-grained control over what flags are uh, selected and so on and so forth. Um, so let's see. There's cups, which is for printing. Disk manager display. Uh, after the next reboot, no. What I'd like to do, oh, maybe because these are being updated, maybe that's why these have these little icons on them, so we can't really do anything with them at the moment. I'm not sure. Um, so they're using Pulse Audio for their audio. There's a screen locker. All right. Oh, there's more. Networking. Akunati. All right. So some of these are. KDE things. Some of these are BSD specific. Boot manager, update manager. All right, let's see. Screen locker. If that goes, all right. All right, good. It's not going to automatically start because it's not a public computer. No one's ever going to be on this besides me. That's fine. All right. Let's exit out of there. So, <laughs> this thing is updating. And that's fine. Let's, I wonder if I can open this if I'm also doing this at the moment. Probably not if it's anything like uh, YUM or DNF or uh, DEB and all that stuff. Yeah, so the system's updating, so you can't go here to. And that's good because um, you don't want um, changes happening at the exact same time. All uh, right. not a huge fan of the default uh, background, but that's whatever. That's not the end of the world. Um, okay. So I'm going to stop the recording here, let this thing update, and uh, I'll come back tomorrow and finish up my uh, impressions of the first look after I look at the app cafe and then I'll um, come back to it and do another um, video once I've played around with it for a bit because um, this looks like it's gonna take a while and uh, there's no point in making you guys watch this so I'll be back in a bit although for you it'll be instantaneous so here I am back again and the system's all up to date and one of the neat things that I learned in the time between when I last recorded and now is that the way PCBSD does updates is that they make a snapshot 
and then of your current operating system and then they boot into a new version so that you can always use their version of Grub to go back to a previous snapshot so you never have to worry about hosing your system and that allows you to have the safety of automatic security updates without the worry of what if my system breaks Fedora has been talking about using ButterFS to set up something like that for a while and um, they haven't got to it yet but it's a huge infrastructure change to the way Linux works so I'm not surprised that they haven't got to it yet and they have been working on related technologies like using XDG and other technologies to have apps be more self-contained. Getting back to PCBSD, uh, it looks like when I installed, uh, for some reason I didn't end up um, installing uh, Lumia. So let me go ahead and do that. just take a look at um, PCBSD's own um, desktop environment. Let's see here. Do an app search. And here it is. It has five out of five stars, which is pretty good. It's a lightweight thing. Yes, a bunch of dependencies. Um, it is Qt based, which kind of continues the whole thing of PCBSD uh, um, having KDE as their default desktop environment. Okay, still working a little. So, still going, still going. All right. I imagine it's probably installing the various dependencies. We'll see. Because I keep seeing something go 10% and then 10% and then true. So. Well, that's working. I wonder if I can explore what they have here under emulators. I may not be able to. I might not be able to leave the screen. Oh, there we go. All right. They have a pretty, pretty good array of things here. They have Wine. They have Camu. They have Stella. So Stella is for Ataris. QMC is like a main front end. Um, this is uh, Sega Saturn, I think. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, Commodore. Oh, okay. I just had to highlight over it. There we go. Uh, this one does not have a tooltip. That one has a tooltip. Yeah, Sega Saturn. Okay. I recognize the uh, logo. Um, here's a really good PlayStation emulator. Uh, Cisco Network Simulator. That's interesting. Uh, really, really old version of MAME. I th think I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Mess. These are one thing now. Uh, fuse. Ooh, a Spectrum emulator. All right. Nintendo and Famicom. And this is the uh, what's that dual screen thing? Nintendo DS. Yep. That's not bad. That's actually not too bad at all, considering uh, BSD is not as uh, targeted as other operating systems like Linux and Windows and you know even Linux sometimes even when uh, emulators are uh, are open source sometimes they're only made for Windows or Linux is a second class citizen so I wouldn't be surprised that BSD would uh, potentially be uh, even more of a second class citizen when it comes to that stuff so I'm just trying to log out see if I can log into Lumina see what that looks like Okay, there it is, Lumina. All right, detecting applications, preparing workspace. That's pretty fast. Whoa, look at that. Very nice. Looks uh, pretty similar in this configuration to uh, to KDE. Um, I can change the desktop. I won't have that annoying back and forth scrolling. Um, 
for whatever reason it doesn't uh, in this emulator it doesn't pick up the correct resolution doesn't look like I can change it here though one uh, if you're gonna run in a VM I guess that's one place where KDE is a little better That's okay, it's not the end of the world. Interface, applications, cool. So there's uh, there's Lumina. Uh, let's see here. VLC, browse file, browse applications. Ah, interesting. Interesting uh, way that they've set this up here. It's not horrible. Not my preference, but not horrible. I mean, I do like that you don't have to keep clicking into each of the categories. You can kind of just um, scroll. That's kind of neat. I wonder if I start typing stuff. Mm, doesn't seem like I can type, which is kind of a bummer. That's one of my favorite things with with uh, modern GUIs. And what about Alt F2? There we go. Yeah, it's not too bad. And of course, here's a life preserver, which I don't remember if I mentioned this uh, earlier, but uh, it'll automatically back up to um, to any um, free NAS since free NAS is also FreeBSD. It'll automatically back up to any free NAS um, servers you happen to have. Um, it's very easy to set up. Um, what's this one here? Network shares. And this is if you're up to date. Very cool. Very nice. All right, well, that's been my look at uh, PCBSD 10. I think it's pretty neat. Um, kind of going over everything that I saw with this, I would say that this is uh, probably the easiest turnkey way to get a um, graphical user-friendly setup in BSD um, if you know what you're doing you're probably better off just using FreeBSD and installing whatever GUIs you want kind of similar to what you would do if you were doing Arch Linux I would say that BSD vanilla FreeBSD and is kind of similar to Arch Linux in that sense. You kind of just add what you want and um, build up exactly what you need. You can even do com compiling kind of Gen 2 style if uh, you don't like the packages. Um, but I think they have a nice setup. They have some really nice um, utilities here. I like that they have the handbook right on the desktop. Um, I like, I really, really like that they have a mode to automatically install security updates and thanks to their um, snapshotting that you don't have to worry that anything's going to break. You can always go back to a working snapshot. Um, so the only real negatives would be that um, BSD is not going to be as well supported as Linux. So I looked up, for example, Steam. Um, right now, there is no Steam for um, BSD, uh, which makes sense. Technically, there's only Steam for Ubuntu, um, and it's up to everyone else to make it work on their um, distributions and um, I, I saw a headline possibly alarmist possibly not saying that uh, the share of Linux on Steam is not quite as high as it could be and there could be many reasons for that people could be using um, home streaming or other things to uh, play their AAA games or they may be using GOG instead of Steam who knows it's really not here nor there if you want to do it on PCBSD you need to use Wine which um, for most cases probably was going to work just fine but you know it's not going to work quite as well as um, where um, Steam has said hey these games we know they're going to work on Linux and they're going to work well and so on and so forth um, and then you know just in general um, you're going to have to find and compile your own stuff and um, perhaps change some parameters if it's only made for Linux and not BSD I would say for the average person who's just going to mostly go on the web and do some um, emailing and stuff like that um, PCBSD as well as pretty much any operating system is perfectly fine. 
So um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time I take a look at another um, operating system. Thanks. Thanks for watching.